God bless everyone that's going to be joining this live, whether now or after I am done. So, I was reminded tonight of a children's story. So, this is a very familiar children's story. You may have heard about the book or you may have watched the movie, The Cat in the Hat. So, I'm going to briefly talk about the cat in a hat. Now, this is not to encourage anyone to go and look it up, but one of the things about the cat in the hat, you know, you have these these children and they're given simple instructions by their parents to or or by their mom more so to not open the door for anyone. It doesn't matter who it is, not to open the door for anyone. And I think the movie they had a maid, but she went to sleep. But anyways, you have this very interesting cat who comes to the door and they have this pet fish and the pet fish is kind of like the one telling them and reminding them of what their their mom told them to do. Don't open the door for anyone. Make sure you keep the house clean. And so what ends up happening is they open the door just a little and the cat came right in. But when the cat came in, the cat didn't just come by himself. He had some friends with him. He had thing one and thing two. Now, the interesting thing about the things that he bought was that thing one and thing two, they began to actually destroy the home of the children that the mom told him to keep clean. And so you have thing one and thing two, they're all over the house and they're destroying it so bad that it seems, and I think their name was Conrad. I think the, the boy name was Conrad. I forget the girl's name. But it's so bad that at this point, it doesn't seem like it's even impossible to, to fix the house because the house is so torn up. And I think, I think at the time when the cat was trying to come in, I think it was raining that day. So I'm going to tie this in because the enemy works that same way. Just like that cat, the enemy looks for a crack. He looks for a way in. The moment we start to open ourselves up to the spirit of discouragement, the moment we start opening up the door to fear, the moment we start opening up the door to pride, do know that the enemy is as a roaring lion. Listen, he may not be the cat in the hat, but he is a cat. He is like a cat. He is like a cat. The enemy is like a cat. The word of God says that he is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and so he only needs a small crack and when the enemy comes he comes like a flood when the enemy shows up he's coming with purpose to destroy to kill and to steal one of the things that i considered when i thought about the cat in the hat is so the cat came at a very vulnerable time for the children so as i mentioned it was raining it was raining they were bored they didn't have anything to do and I thought about how the enemy likes to tempt us at our most weakest state when we're a lot more vulnerable. And I thought about when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness. Now, the enemy could have showed up at any other time, but I thought it was very significant how he showed up at Jesus, one of Jesus' weakest moments, right? Because Jesus had been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And so the enemy came to tempt Jesus three times and... In the end, Jesus ended up, ended up rebuking him, rebuking him. And the word of God says that he left for a season. And so, yes, the enemy, he comes in a season, but he leaves for a season as well. And so when, when we begin to take our focus off of the instructions of God, when we begin to take our focus off of who God is and who he says we are, and we begin to set our focus and our attentions and everything else on what's going on around us that's when we give the enemy place so if i am dealing with offense do you know you are on a time schedule when you're dealing with offense when you're dealing with pride when you're dealing with lust and perversion when you're dealing with unbelief you have a certain amount of time to actually confront that before that thing starts to actually take root on the soul of your heart or the core of your heart. You have a certain amount of time to deal with it at its earliest stage before that thing begins to grow like cancer. 
And so if I am fearful, if I am offended, if I'm dealing with pride, if I don't address it at its earliest stage, then that's going to overtake me. Jesus says that when an unclean spirit, when it leaves a person, it walks through the dry places. And when it finds no rest there, it returns back to, it tries to go back to his home. The cat in the hat, that cat, he wanted to get in on the inside because he had motives. You know, he made the, the children think it was something else, but he had already had plans. He had already had intentions to cause some destruction, and that's how the enemy works. We don't think that the enemy is in the details. We don't realize that, and I don't want to focus too much on the enemy, but I am trying to make a point. If we are not vigilant, if we are not sober, then we commiss where the enemy is trying to come in and take our peace where the enemy is trying to come in and take our joy, where the enemy is trying to come in and take your keys and take your weapons that God has given you. If we're not sober to catch when we are starting to veer off the road, then we're, we're, we're going to let the enemy right in. Even when you don't think and consider what's, what's actually happening right now. My pastor talked about the different types of ground and one of the things that Jesus mentioned that he reiterated is you got to be careful how you hear and how the devil, he's in the details. Even when you don't think that that's the devil, you got to consider why. Because he's trying every which way to steal and to snatch up what God is trying to sow and what God is trying to give you. God has given you clear instructions. God has given you insight. God has given you things that he wants you to maintain and invest in. But if you're distracted, if you're caught up in your situation, whatever it is, whether it's financial situations, relationship situations, I think money and relationships seems to be the most the most common issues that we face today in, in our nation. You know, we value money, we value people. And so when, when our relationships are threatened, when our money is threatened, then a lot of times we naturally default to our natural state, which is fight or flight. No, I want to save this relationship. You know, I don't want to burn bridges with anyone. I don't want to cut ties. I actually want to save this relationship because I benefit in some way financially. I want to make sure that I get rich or I want to try to get rich. I want to make sure that you know whatever i have to whatever i have to do to keep food on the table i want to do that and so you have people chase who chase money you have people who tra chase relationships sometimes people do certain things to find love the point that i'm making is if these things are our downfall then we've already given the enemy place we've already opened the door like the cat like the children did to the cat they open the door your mom gave you clear instructions your mom told you to not open the door sometimes god gives us clear instructions and we don't think that we're gonna have to reap the consequences we don't think that it's gonna be that bad like those children they, they had to suffer thing one and thing two drove them crazy and i think eventually eventually the cat built some kind of machine that ended up cleaning the house cleaning the house but they ended up getting caught they ended up getting caught and so if we are not careful then we can allow the enemy to take hold on our emotions. Especially when it comes to the word of God. You have to be careful when it comes to the word of God because the enemy doesn't want you to be free. He doesn't want you to know the truth. He doesn't want you to have the truth. And so if he can discourage you, if he can get someone at work to discourage you, if he can get someone from your past to call you up and ask do you want to hang out again if he can just call something to come across your phone or your mobile device or your electronic device that represented the oh you then he would do that and if you don't catch it right away meaning the moment that advertisement pop up i can either continue watching or i can exit god always makes a way of escape when that person who I cut off calls my phone or reach me through messenger, I get to make a decision. 
And that's what I'm learning in this season, that everything is decision-based. I get to decide every moment of my life, every moment of my day, where I am going. Because every decision that we make, we're going somewhere. Either I'm going to spend eternity with God or away from God. I'm going in a direction. My decisions, it communicates where I'm going, where I'm going. So I get to decide to take joy. I get to decide to be excited. I get to decide to be happy. I get to decide to press. I get to decide to overcome. I get to decide to fight through. Everything that we do is a decision. I get to decide whether or not I let this situation move me. I get to decide whether or not I let this circumstance set me back, you know, cause dirt in my well. That's one of the things that we have been talking about in our women's study here in our local gathering is the different wells because we are wells, but if our wells are clogged up and, and the well that I'm talking about is where you would actually get fresh water that it provides so many different things from drinking to cleansing and, and, and washing. It's very, it's a very vital thing to have a clean flowing well but what happens if the well is clogged up what happens if i'm dealing with offense what happens if i'm dealing with a what was me mentality or the victim's mentality what happens if i feel like everybody else is to blame and not me what happens when i feel like i don't have to love people or or i don't only want an explanation and those kinds of things are going to keep my well clogged and that's also going to make room for the enemy. And I need to be mindful and catch it when, when my emotion starts doing things that it wasn't doing before. Meaning I had, a, I had a mind full of peace and the joy of the Lord. But then I began to think about what happened yesterday and what that person said to me that offended me. And now that's playing in my mind. And now I'm thinking about, man, that, that does kind of bother me now that I'm thinking about it. And then I take that on. And the enemy is like, yes, that's all I needed was a crack. You got to catch that. You have to catch what's happening on the inside of you. You know, most of us, we, really, we do a really good job of deceiving ourselves and convincing ourselves that, no, that's not the problem. That's not the issue. That's not what it is. I'm not the problem. And you don't realize that you don't realize that you've just clogged up a well, a flowing well to where you could have you've could have had so much more from the Lord because Jesus Christ, he's the living water. And because he's a well, he makes us wells. But if if I'm not being honest with myself and my feelings and my emotions, then I cut off my access. I cut off access from the, the main source. I cut off access to the Father if I decide to not deal with what's being highlighted, what's being preached. Although the word of God offends, it, it's supposed to offend. Why? Because it gives every single human being an existence who hears the word to evaluate themselves. You heard that word. Now what are you going to do with it? Because it's, it's doing something. Just like when a seed is planted, it's doing something. Yeah, that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to respond. It's designed to have a reaction. So it may grow or it may not grow. You have the different types of ground. You have the stony ground. You have the, what is it? You have the, the, thorny, the thorny ground. So I said stony, thorny, and hard. You have good. So you have all of these different types of ground. And the, what is it? The first, is it the first two? So the first one, let me go to it real quick. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mess nobody up. Um, the second two, or the the two middle ones, so the thorny and the stony are normally those that are believers that are saved. Let me go there real quick. I think it's Matthew thirteen. Yes, Matthew thirteen. 
This is why I need my actual physical Bible with me because it, I, I know exactly where to go when I have that. So, uh, let me see. I like the different types of ground. I do I enjoy reading it. Okay, um... Okay, yep, stony. So Jesus says some fell among stony places. Some fell among thorns. I'm missing one. Some fell by the wayside. And so the second stony and the third thorns, those types of grounds are normally people who are considered to be saved. Yet they endure for a little bit and then they, they fall away. That first ground is someone who just, they, they don't even make it far. They don't make it really far. They hear the word of God and it says, Jesus says how the evil one, he comes and he takes away what has been planted. That's that open door. You know, people leave the door wide open for the cat to come in. <laughs> they leave the door wide, like they leave the door wide open, wide open for the enemy. And I hear often, more than often enough, of how busy the devil is. But most of you all, you're out here keeping him busy because of the way that you are living. And I, I want to be clear that the enemy can't do anything unless we allow him to. Now, he has been given power from God, but he can't do anything because the word of God says that if I submit myself to God, resist the devil he has to flee and so he cannot do anything unless i have open doors open doors to bitterness open doors to unbelief open doors to doubt open doors to pride open doors to stubbornness open doors to rebellion open doors to perversion and and, and fear yeah if i have the door open to fear then fear is going to come in if I have the door open to pride, then pride is going to come in. Yes, whatever I open the door to, that's what's going to come in. And I have to be vigilant enough to know what's on the, what's on the other side of that door. Because what, might, what I might open the door to may not be what I can even handle or what I expect. Because as I said, when the enemy comes, he comes in like a flood. And he's, he's bringing things. He's bringing things. Jesus says that the unclean spirit, I never got to finish that scripture from the beginning of this live. But when that, when those spirits, when they try to return back to that person, that person's body, because the Holy Spirit can either occupy a person's body or unclean spirits can either occupy, occupy a person's body. And so when they find that it has been swept and garnished, meaning nobody's living here, they're going to feel it. Something has to fill it because you were designed to be filled. You were designed to be filled. So something has to fill it. And so he says that when those unclean spirits, when they come back and they occupy that person's body all over again, he says that the state of that man is worse than the first because that unclean spirit, it brings more friends. It brings more friends. Oh, your your parents are not here. Oh, your parents are out of town. Okay, well, this is where the this is where the house party is. Your body, it is a house. It is a temple. And so when you open the door to the spirit of fear and the spirit of lust, guess what? That unclean spirit, it comes back and it's bringing some friends. Yeah, Jesus says that he brings seven more. And they're worse than before. And, and this is why you can see people who started off in the faith, they went back. Why? Because they had some open doors and they left some doors open. Some of the doors, they didn't close and lock. Some of the, some of the doors, they left wide open. And guess what? The cat came in, the enemy came in and he brought friends. And when he comes, when he comes, he's coming to destroy the place. He's not coming to keep it clean. That's why you can see a person you can tell a lot of times what's going on on a person's heart, on the inside of their heart, what they're actually dealing with based on how they look on the outside. You've ever seen a person just, they look beat down by the world, torn down by the world. They carry it, they wear it, they have bags under their eyes. You know, their face are bloodshot red. They, they carry the burdens of what they're going through. They, they carry it because there are unclean spirits living on the inside of them and destroying the place. Yeah, it's making them feel 
insecure. It's making them feel unvalued and, and unloved and, and unworthy. It's, it's making them feel like trash because that's what the enemy is doing. He's filling the person's heart with lust and perversion and murder and hatred and aggression and all kinds of things. You, you, you know that this is true based on your thoughts. You know the kind of thoughts that you have. Where did those thoughts come from? Because not every thought that you think is yours. And not every thought that you think is the enemy. Not every thought that you think is the enemy is the enemy. Sometimes it's God and you have to know the difference. But you know that your vessel is unclean based on what comes out of it. Because of what you fill it with. You fill it with trash. Guess what's going to come out? Trash. Trash is going to come out. You ought to be a vessel of honor. But in order to keep your vessel clean, you have to stay connected to the well. You have to stay connected to the source. And as he's closing all of the, all of the doors in your life, you know, the doors of, of hatred, the doors of unforgiveness, the doors of pride and stubbornness and every promiscuous spirit, every spirit of witchcraft, every manipulative spirit, as he's closing these doors. This is why when you get saved, you have to refrain from certain things. One of them being friends and family. Why? Because those things bring familiar spirits. They bring those, those spirits back. And so in order for you to keep those doors shut and locked and done away with, you have to, as I said, the enemies, he's, he's in the details. When you don't think that, when you don't think... <laughs> You got to think, you got to consider, wait, 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 what's happening right now? Why is my family trying so hard to get back in contact with me? With me? Why are they trying to discourage me? Why are they saying these things? Yeah, the moment you get back in contact with them, you don't realize that you, you are already going back in your mind based on the conversations because, you know, they want to joke on the phone. They want to gossip on the phone. They want to talk about old things that you no longer partake in. They want to talk about these things. And guess what? That's doing something on the inside. That's tampering with your vessel that's supposed to stay clean. And so it can't stay clean if I'm not staying connected to the source. It can't stay clean if I'm not cutting those things that I need to cut off off. No, I need to cut it off and I need to keep my eyes on Jesus. I need to focus on Jesus. I need to be so focused on Jesus that when he speaks, I hear him. And not only that, I'm listening. And not only that, I actually do what he says. Jesus says, if any man hears his word and do it, he says he will liken him unto a man who builds his house upon the rock. He says, when the rain falls and the floods come and the winds blow, he says, this house is stable. This house is established. This house is founded upon the rock. But he says, if you hear the word and you do nothing with it, it goes over your head. It goes into one ear and out the other. Then he says, you are like a man who builds his house up on the sand. And when the rains come and the winds blow and the floods come, that house falls. It is unstable. The foundation is not a solid foundation. It's a shaky foundation because you're stony ground. You're the wayside. You're thorny ground. Yeah. When persecution arises, then you go back. When things get hard, you you go back. You're, you're that kind of ground. You are that kind of ground. He says, if you hear the word and you choose to not do it, you're like someone who builds his house up on something that's unstable, an unsure foundation. Now you you like shaky things because when life gets shaky around you, you get shaken and you, you go. You go back. You're thorny ground. You're stony ground. You're wayside. And so we don't want to be those kind of people. We got to be so focused on Jesus that when he speaks, we're taking in everything and we're evaluating what's happening on the inside because his, the word of God, it does offend. And this is why every man has to evaluate himself and know what's going on on the inside of my heart. You got to consider something that was said is that many of us, when we were in sin, we didn't associate all of the bad stuff that was happening to us with the fact that we were out of the will of, will of God. I mean, some of us did. Some of us, it was very clear why we was going through what we were going through. Like, <laughs> I already know why, why I'm behind bars. I already know why I got, you know, caught up in this situation over here. I already know. It's because I'm out of the will of God. It's because God has been calling me and I've been running. And so we have to be careful how we hear, 
we have to, we want to be so connected to the father that we know when it's his voice, because that cat, them, them kids, those kids, they could have, they've are, they could have already recognized that that was not a familiar voice. And because it was not a familiar voice, they should not have opened the door to that cat and allowed that cat to come in. It's an unfamiliar voice. Why are you opening the door? That's the thing. God is never going to tell you anything that's going to take you out of his will. Unless he's trying to deceive you. And, and, and if the Lord is doing that, then that says something about you. But personally, that's not you. But the enemy, he's going to deceive you. He knows that you have desires. He knows what you are asking God for. He knows. He knows he's been studying you since you were little. He knows. And so you got to be very careful. And this is why Jesus says his sheep, they know his voice. And they were not hearken to the voice of a stranger. How do you think those sheep learned the shepherd's voice? They stayed close. They stayed near. They were not on the outer skirts, you know, in their own mindset in their own way no they were close no i need to make sure that i know your voice and i learn your voice because if anyone does try to get bold if anyone does try to have a bright idea if anyone does try to call i want to make sure i know how to distinguish the two because some people they think that it's the voice of god but they're not trying to spirits and they're opening the door and guess what people's lives when you look up when you look on social media, when you turn on the news, turn on the news, what do you see? You see people's lives falling apart. That should tell you something. That should tell you something. And so we need more grace to focus on Jesus. We need more grace to obey. We need more grace to be faithful. And we need more grace to know the voice of God. Receive his truth. You do not have to be those other types of ground. You can be good ground, but you get to decide. Like I said, it's a decision. It's a decision. You get to decide that either you are good ground or you're not. Whatever you think about yourself, whatever you think about you, that's what's going to become of it. As a man thinks, so is he. If you think that, you're, I don't want to say, I don't want to say that word, but if you don't think that you're going to heaven, I'll say that, then the likelihood the likelihood is you are probably not. If you don't think that you're going to hell, the likelihood is you are probably not. And so be encouraged in Jesus' name.